Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover equipment. I'm going to cover three things in particular. I'm going to talk about how the equipment system works inside RPG in a box. I'm then going to talk about how to use the inbuilt equipment setup. And then I'm going to talk about how to use your own custom setup. Before we get into any of the tutorial stuff, I want to talk about how the equipment system works inside RPG in a box. So if you are a veteran of RPG in a box and you already know how the equipment system works, then you can feel free to skip this part of the video and I'll put in the description the time links to the actual tu tutorial stuff. So feel free to skip ahead to that. Or you can uh, keep watching to uh, learn how the equipment system works if you if you might find this interesting. But if you are uh, new to RPG in a box, then there's some things that I think would help to have explained to you so that you understand how the equipment system is expected to work so that if you can get your head around these things, then uh, you should have less problems uh, setting up your equipment. So let's get into how the equipment system works. So there are two key parts to equipment in RPG in a box. There's two types of entity, if you will, and there's two types of process. Let's start with the two types of entity. So in RPG in a box, you have objects and you have items. I mean, there's more than that, but when it comes to equipment, there's two types of entity, objects and items. Let's start with objects, first of all. So here, for example, I have three objects. I have an armor object, a shield object, and a sword object. So if I double click the sword, it will open in what's called the voxel editor. And the voxel editor, the voxel editor can make three different types of 3D entity, if you will. It can make an object, which is what the sword is. It can make a tile, or it can make a character. Now, obviously, if you've been using RPG in a box for a little bit, you should already know the differences between these three things. So this bit should be pretty much uh, given to you at this point. But just to quickly, uh, as we're talking about them, just to quickly go over the differences. Tile is typically what you would use for geometry. So walls, floors, stairs, anything that would um, contain navigational information for where the players and characters can or can't walk using navigational lines. Characters are obviously your NPCs and player characters. These are um, entities that can be talked to, that can be interacted with, that can have combat with, anything that sort of uh, type of thing will be a character. And then objects are a variety of things. They can be decorative. They can be interactable things like doors or uh, chests, you know, treasure chests, that sort of thing. Um, and in the case of equipment, they are 3D models that represent the items that you would use. So let's quickly talk about items now. Items, if you click uh, on the items tab, this is where you would have your items. Now, I don't currently have any yet. But we'll create some in a second for the equipment. The items are essentially, let's uh, create one just quickly, just so we've got something to show. Items are essentially um, things that will be in, either in your inventory, be found in treasure chests and containers, and also found on various different widgets. Uh, or user interface elements, whether it be a crafting menu or an equipping menu, any anything, any time that you would use a uh, user interface to see a representation of a game item, it would be an item. It would actually be one of these things here called an item. It gets a bit confusing because uh, they, you would think they're the same thing. You know, the sword, surely the sword is an item. The thing I'm looking at right here, right now, is an item because it's a sword, right? But actually, when it comes to RPG in a box, this is an object, okay? Whereas these 
are items. Okay, so it's really important to make that distinction and understand that distinction in your head before we go any further with this video, because it's really important to get your head around this, that you need, that you've got items, which are uh, things that are in your inventory. And then you've got objects, which are the 3D models, which can either be placed directly into your map. So for example, I could place the sword somewhere in my map and then I could pick it up. Or they can be used to attach to characters and other objects. So for example, I could have this character hold this sword, okay? This character can't hold the item because the item doesn't have a 3D model. This this item is, is a... It, usually they're represented by 2D um, images, so PNGs, whereas the objects are voxel models, okay? They consist of voxels. So it's really important to understand that these these two things, objects and items, are very separate. And unless set up to do this, they do not talk to one another. So if I was to create an item called sword, it is very different to this object. Okay. They are not the same thing. Okay. They don't directly talk to one another. They can be made to somewhat be connected, but unless you actually do that, unless you physically set that up, it's not going to work by default. Okay, so they are two very separate things. Okay, and they serve two very different processes. And I mentioned earlier that not only are there two elements to equipment, but there's also two processes to equipment. There's the equipping part of the process, and there's the attaching part of the process. Okay, and each one of those two processes deals with the different types of thing. So equipping is handled by items, okay? You can't equip objects. You can only equip items, okay? And attaching is done with objects. You can't attach items. You can attach objects. Now, what's the difference between the two? Equipping just purely relates to the equipment interface. So the act of dragging a item, and that's what I mean, an item, the act of dragging an item, uh, good to user interface again, the act of dragging an item out of your inventory, so imagine I'm dragging that out of my inventory, and into an equipment slot, that's equipping. That's what the, the RPG in a box considers equipping is the act of just dragging something out of your inventory and putting it into a slot. The moment it goes into that slot, it's considered equipped. However, what we would consider equipping is not only that, but also seeing the item being held by the player, which is why it gets a bit confusing because that's not how RPG in a box by default sees it. Because then what you have to do is you then have to trigger an attachment process where once you've equipped something, you then attach the object to the player. So that's where the models come in. Okay, so that's why it's important to understand these two things, the item and the object, are very different things, and they also fulfill very different parts of the equipment or equipping process. Okay, items are purely for equipping something, whereas objects are purely for attaching. So maybe the best way to explain this is if I wanted to see this sword being held by my player character, I would need an item for it that I can drag into a slot. So in the user interface, I could drag the 2D image of the sword into this slot here, for example. That's one part of the process. But the other part of the process is then after doing that, having this 3D model be attached to the hand of the player so that you see the player holding the sword, okay? What I'm trying to explain is that those two things need to be set up differently. They are separate processes and one will not work with, one will not automatically equate to the other working. You have to set it up to do that. They can work automatically, but you need to know how to do that. So if you've ever had this, if you've ever been trying to set up an equipment system and you've you've been struggling with it, whether it be, you know, I, I can't seem to get the weapon to appear in the player's hands, or I can't get the 
item to go into the the right box properly. If these are the issues you're having, then that's what this video is going to hopefully uh, explain. So I hope that's made sense. I'm trying to really, th this video has taken me a few attempts because it's really difficult to try and explain how, explain clearly how the equipment system works inside RPG in a box. But I figure if it's best to, it'd be a good idea to try and explain it in a video because if you can get your head around it, then uh, rather than just following what I do and not really understanding why it works the way it does, if I can at least try and explain how it works and how RPG in a box expects what it expects you to do and why it's expecting you to do it in a certain way, if you can start to understand that, then you won't need to follow the steps quite so much. You should be able to sort of almost troubleshoot your own problems because if you understand how something works then it's easier to make it work for yourself if that makes sense so but i i will obviously go step by step through this as well but i just wanted to start by trying to explain uh how equipment works because it, it it does trick a lot of people up and i and that's why i wanted to do this video um and i wanted to start by taking a moment just to try and explain how it works and hopefully try and get these concepts across so with that in mind, let's go into the tutorial and hopefully as I go through this, the things I've said so far will start to make more sense as you see it being put into action, as it were. So let's start with how to use the inbuilt RPG in a box equipment setup. So let's just uh, delete this item for a moment. The first part to equipment is to take a look at the stats tab. So if you look at the, the tabs along the top, there's one called stats with the heart symbol. If you click that, you should be met with this screen. And further down here is the equipment section, okay? And if we have a look, we can see that there's a slot configuration section. And if this is a brand new project, like it is for me, the only thing you should have in there is default, okay? Now, the diff this is the inbuilt uh, setup. Now, the slot IDs for the slot configuration, for the default slot configuration, is head, right hand, and left hand. Now, notice how they are labeled. Head, right underscore hand, left underscore hand. These names are going to be important, and I'll explain why they're important later on, but we'll come back to that. But if we click on each slot ID, that's what these are, they're called slot IDs. If we click on each slot ID, you can see that each one has a couple of options on the right-hand side that change as I go down the different slot IDs. So the first option is item tags allowed. And that basically dictates what items, and remember items are these 2D things which we'll create in a moment, but the item tags basically specifies what items can go into each of these slots. So in the case of the head slot ID, it takes an item tag of helmet, which basically means that any items that don't have that tag are not going to be allowed to be placed into this slot ID, which makes sense because you might not want to put swords or shields on your head, right? That would be, that would be rather silly. So to stop the player being able to do that, you specify what items they can put into particular slots. And that's done by the tags, which we'll get to in a moment when we set these up. The other option we have is a toggle switch for whether the slot is a weapon or not. Now we can't edit these because this is the default um, inbuilt system. You either work with the inbuilt system or you make your own. You can't actually change this. But you can see that the head slot ID doesn't support weapons. The right hand slot does, and it even has a tag for weapon. And the left hand doesn't. So the only hand that you can put weapons into in the inbuilt system is the right hand slot. Okay. So let's start by making it so that we can equip a sword and a shield into these two slots. I'm not going to bother with the head. You don't have to use all of the slot IDs. They're just there if you want to also, you know, it's it's there so that if you wanted to make a helmet straight out of the box, you can, okay? 
but I'm just going to focus in this part of this video on a weapon and a shield, okay? Now, at the moment, the only thing I've got are voxel models of a sword and a shield, but those aren't equipable. Remember what I said at the, at the intro. Objects can't be equipped, only items can. So what I need to do is I need to go to the items section and I need to create a couple of items that are basically going to be item versions of the sword and the shield. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to click add item and I'm going to call this sword and I'll just type a quick description, a simple sword. And for the image, you could either import one or you could create one using the inbuilt image uh, pixel art generator. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a direct image of the model. So I'm just going to zoom in, get a good angle, and then click the capture image to file button and just resize this to get a picture of the sword that way. So if you didn't know you could do that, you can. You can take images of your uh, models if you're not particularly good at drawing and you can use those as your item images. So now what we can do is we can drop the image thing down. We've now got a sword picture which is an image of our sword. Okay? So, we want this sword to be equipable. Now, items have various different options. For example, is it edible? You know, is it a fruit? or a drink or something like that, can you eat it then, or is it usable like a potion, then you would turn that on. Is it stackable, so if you have more than one, can it all go into the same inventory slot, or, you know, do you have to have, you know, put each one into a separate slot. Is it equipable, so in other words, which is what we want, can you equip the item. Is it craftable, can you make it, refer to my previous tutorial where I covered the crafting mechanics, so can you make this item. Uh, is it a tool? So like a shovel or a, a pickaxe? Can you use it to interact with another object or a tile in some way? Can you put it down? Can you drop it? How much does it cost if you want to buy it or sell it? And then tags, which is the, remember earlier with the stats, we have the item tags allowed. We'll get to that in a second. But you would set up tags for your items, usually for the equipment system, but also for scripting as well. And then you've got custom properties, which can be things like, for example, we could set up a number property, which we could set to 100, just to give you an example of what how you might use a property. This could be, for example, durability. And now you've given your item a custom property of durability. If you wanted to make something like a durability system, where you could basically set a starting value of 100, and then over the course of the game, if you attack things, you can have this number go down using a script and then if it reaches a certain threshold it then breaks, unequips or gets removed or whatever. So those are properties. They're beyond the scope for today's video but I'm just mentioning that they're there. Now the other thing that's important to understand with items is that they can be connected to a 3D model. Okay, remember that objects and items by default are not connected. They, they don't talk to one another. However, they can be made to reference one another because if you take a look in the item properties, we have an object model option. And what we can do is we can drop this down and we can select the sword. So now we've connected this item to this object. So now what that means is if we set it up so that when we equip this item, it can also attach the model. Now, we, we will need to do a bit more for that to work, but in essence, this is starting to set that up. Okay, so make sure that your item has the model that, uh, that, ref, that is um, the counterpart, if you know what I mean. So this is the item for the sword, so I've set the model for the sword as well. Okay, so we want this item to be equipable. So we're going to turn this on, okay? Then we, we've got some options we can set for this item. So what does it boost? Well, makes sense. It's a weapon, so we'll, we'll boost attack. And let's say it boosts attack, or attack by, let's say, two. Although I'm actually going to leave it as um, 
Uh, yeah, that's, that's a bit of two. So it's going to boost our, you know, our chances to hit by two, okay? We also have a couple of scripts. Now, I will get to the scripts at the very end, but these can be used as an alternate way of attaching uh, the object to your player character if you don't want to use the automatic inbuilt approach. We'll start with the automatic inbuilt approach first, just so I can explain fully how the mechanics work. And then we'll cover scripting at the end as a sort of alternate uh, manual approach if you wish to be a bit more, um, if you want a bit more freedom and a bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A bit more choice, you know, if you want to have a bit more creative control. We also want to turn weapon on because this is a sword. It makes sense to turn the weapon on. It's, uh, we can then choose whether it's melee or ranged. It's melee. If we give it an animation, what, what's the, the attack animation on the character? It's attack, so we'll leave that. So this is the animation name for the player character or the N NPC or enemy or whatever's going to have this item. This is what animation name should play when that uh, weapon is used. Then we've got minimum and maximum damage. So let's say two to six. So quite a wide range, but you know, you the minimum damage it will do is two and the maximum if you're lucky is six and then if it takes any ammo or energy it's a sword so i'm going to leave it to unlimited use and that's that's that now let's just quickly set up the other uh, item as well which is the shield i haven't fully set up the sword yet so there's one last thing i haven't done but i've left that deliberately We'll come back to that. So let's quickly get an image of the shield as well. Go back to our items and set that up as the image. This is equipable. This is defense this time. Let's boost defense by three, let's say. And it's not a weapon, but we're gonna tie it to the model shield. Okay, and we'll click save. So we've created two items. Okay, now, as I say, items are very different to the objects, but we've sort of connected them up via the model. Okay, now, if we go back to the stats tab and take a look at our equipment section, we have these slot IDs with these tags. Okay, so we want to be able to put our sword uh, item. Let's disregard the objects for now. Okay, so what I want you to do, just so this helps you to understand how this all works, even though I've got these models here, ignore them. Okay, we're not worrying about those right now. We're only dealing with these 2D items. Okay, these items I've been setting up here. Imagine these don't exist right now. Okay, so I want to be able to equip this sword item into this stat slot. Okay into the right hand slot because this is the one that takes weapons okay and it says item tags allowed weapon now i can't change this because this is the inbuilt equipment setup but i can change my items tag so what i need to do is i need to scroll down on my sword properties and find the tags area and i need to type weapon i need to give it the same tag name as what the stat slot id is looking for or what it will allow okay so now if i save this that means my sword item can now be allowed into this slot okay this slot id and we need to do the same for the left hand which is going to take the shield now this has got an item tag allowed of shield so if i go to my items section again click my shield item i can now add the shield tag to that. So what that means now is that I can equip these two items. Disregard the models, but I can now equip these two items. So let's go into the game and test that out. So if I click quick play, here we are in the game is my character if i bring down the console and i just quickly give myself the two items that we created
and I bring up the inventory and I open up the equipment screen, I should now be able to put the sword into the right hand slot, like so, it goes in, and the shield into the left hand box, and it goes in there. I can't, however, put the sword, uh, the shield into the head slot because it doesn't have the item tag of helmet. If I gave it the item tag of helmet, it would go in there. I can't put the sword into the other hand, and I can't put the shield into the other hand, uh, into the weapon hand, because it's not allowed. But it can go into each, they, they can go into their respective slot IDs, okay? So, for all intents and purposes, that's how to equip an item, okay? Now, I know you're looking at the screen now thinking, yeah, but that's not, that's half the battle, because the we're not seeing it on the, the on, can't see the sword and the shield on the player character. That's true, but when it comes to the terminology of RPG in a box, this is equipping something, okay? I have made those items, I have equipped those items. They are items, and they are in the equipment slot. I have equipped them, okay? Now what we need to deal with is a separate issue. How do we then, once we've equipped something, attach the relevant model to the player so that we can see it? That's what we need to go back to the editor and set up. So, this is where we now need to pay attention to these names. Remember how I pointed out head, right underscore hand, left underscore hand. These are very important names. Now, if we take a look, this remember, these are the inbuilt. When you load up RPG in a box with a fresh new project, this is the inbuilt equipment, okay? Now, if we take a look at, for example, the Justin model, so ignore mine for a moment, we take a look at the Justin model, this would be an quote-unquote inbuilt model. This is one that comes from the asset library. So it's very easy to, you know, download Stumpy or Justin, Sarah, or any of this sort of, um, or base Justin, any of the inbuilt uh, models, okay? Now, if we take a look at the Justin model, we can see there's three attach points. And if we scroll down on the model properties to the attach points, area, we can see that there's three attach points. And if we take a look at the of what these attach points are called, we can see that they're called right hand or right underscore hand, head, left underscore hand. They are the same exact names. These attach points are the same exact names as the stats slot IDs, head, right underscore hand, left underscore hand, go back to the Justin model, left underscore hand, head, right underscore hand. What that means is that this is how the this is how the equipment system works. When you equip an item, so an item that has a tag, so let's say our sword, for example, has a tag of weapon. When you equip successfully an item, so in other words, drag it from your inventory into a slot, once once that's successful, what it then does is it takes a look at this slot ID, which in this case is right underscore hand. That's the box you put it into, okay? And it looks at the item and it sees that, let's, let's follow it like a sort of process. So once you've equipped the item into the right underscore hand, it looks at the item, in this case the sword, and it sees if it has a model connected to it, which it does, sword, okay? So then what it does is it goes to the sword model. So let's load that up. And it's looking for an attach point. Now, currently, my sword doesn't have an attach point, which is why in the game earlier, you didn't see the sword appear when I put the item into the slot because it was it found the model because I've already set the model up as the model for the item, right? So. It already, it already knew which model to attach, but once it looked at the sword model, it wouldn't have found an attach point, okay? Now, let's fix that now by adding an attach point to the handle of the sword. So I'm going to click the attach points button, create attach point, and I'm going to click on the handle of the sword, 
and this is going to create a new attach point. Now, I can't just call this anything I want if you want it to work automatically. You can, but it would then mean you've got to do it manually. If I want to set this up so it attaches automatically, I need to use the inbuilt system. So I need to type right underscore hand. Okay? Because what it does is this. Now this is going to work. Okay? I can save that because what's going to happen is when you equip something into the, into the slot, it looks for the item, which it finds, sword, because that's the one we've just successfully put into the slot. It then finds, it then sees that it's got a model um, set up for it. So it goes and looks at that and it finds the model. And then what it does is it looks for an attach point that has the same name as the slot ID. So in this case, it finds this attach point because this attach point is called right underscore hand, just like the slot ID is called right underscore hand. And then what it does is it then looks for the same attach point name on the player. And you can see it, there's one here. So I don't actually have one on my main dude. So let me just quickly set those up. So let me just quickly create a right hand slot like that. And if I was to save that, this will now work. So let's go to my sword and just make sure it's all set up. Let's go back into the game. So now if I just give myself the sword, because that's the only one I've set up at the moment. But if I now equip the sword, you also see it appear on the player. Because what it's done the moment I attach it is it finds the 3D model, it finds the attach point with the same name as the slot ID, and it finds the same attach point with the same name on the player, and it puts the two, it attaches the two attach points together. So in other words, because the sword has got an attach point called right hand, and the player's got an attach point called right hand, it puts those two attach points together. That's how it attaches them, okay? And, the, and that happens automatically because those attach points have the same name themselves as the slot upon which you're putting the item that the 3D model is assigned to. Does that make sense? I hope this is making sense. This is how the equipment system works inside RPG in a Box. So if you can get your head around this, then you're going to have, you'll be plain sailing for the rest of this video, okay? So let's quickly set that also up for the shield. So, let's go to our stats tab. Left underscore hand is the slot ID that the item shield goes into. So if we go to our items, here's our shield item. It's connected, it's got an object model of shield. So if we go over to our shield model, we need an attach point upon which this shield can get attached to the player. Let's put that there. This needs to be called left underscore hand because it needs to be the same name as both the player's left hand, but also the slot ID. So that's that. Let's save that. And then we need to go back to the player character and we need to put an attach point on his left hand called left underscore hand. And now if we save that, both of those are going to appear in the game. So now if we bring down the console and I give myself both the sword and the shield. Oops, helps if you don't press the wrong key. Now we should be able to see both of these appear on the player. Like so, okay? Obviously they need adjusting in terms of how they look on the player, but uh, that's just a case of, uh, we'll do that in a second, but that's just a case of adjusting the attach points. But in essence, that's set up. That's how to use the inbuilt RPG in a box equipment setup, okay? That's how it works. And 
the custom isn't going to be much different. The only difference is you can set up your own names and your own widgets, your own user interface. But in essence, this is how the equipment system works inside RPG in a box. So at this point, it's just a case of fine tuning, which we'll do when it comes to the custom. I don't see any reason to um, do that right now when I'm going to set it all up again anyway for the custom one. So now let's talk about how to set up your own custom equipment setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these attach points again. So if you want to delete attach points, they're in the model properties. Just scroll down to the attach point section and just delete the attach points by clicking the red cross icon. And we'll do the same for the sword and the shield, because we're going to create our whole new custom setup. Okay, and we'll save all of those changes. Okay, so to do a custom equipment, you start by going to the stats tab. Now, remember, we can't make changes to the inbuilt one, so we have to create our own. So the first thing we do is we click this green plus button next to the slot configurations drop down list. So if we click that, we can give our a custom equipment system and name. So I'll just call this Slayer's Equipment. And now that now enables me to create as many slot IDs as I want, but also call them whatever I want. So I'm going to create free because I've got free objects here, which I'm going to equip, attach and equip. So the first one can be called weapon. Or let's, let's call it, uh, yeah, I'll just call it weapon slot. And this one can be, um, defense slot. And the final one can be called armor slot. Now we'll see you can call these whatever you want. I'm just calling them these just so it's very different to the previous names so it's clear that these are custom and you know very different from what they were previously we can we can also change the tags that are allowed so let's say the weapon slot um takes things uh items with the tag um I don't know, I mean, you can make these tags whatever you want. It kind of makes sense to have a tag weapon, really, but um, let's just be different from the inbuilt system. So let's, let's make the tag um, blade, bladed, let's say. So this weapon slot's only going to take uh, items with the tag bladed. And then defense slots can take... Um, what are they called? Bucklers. That's what the shields are called. So let's say item tag buckler. And obviously this is a weapon slot, so I'll turn that on. And then armor slot can be chest plate, let's say. Okay. Yeah, you can call them whatever you want. Now, once you've uh, set up your uh, equipment slots, you want to click the star button, which says set slot configuration as default. As soon as I click that, the star is going to move from where it is currently on the default system and it's going to place it on my custom equip setup. Okay, so it's moved the star from being the default to the equipment. If you don't do that, then even though I've created these slots, the game isn't going to use them. So if I try and equip something, it's still going to try and use these pre existing names. And so you're going to find that in game, you're not, when you try and drag the item into your custom user interface, which we'll set up in a second, you'll find that your items won't equip, and that's probably because you haven't set this as, set it to actually use your slots, okay? So, with that set up, we can then save this. So that's created our custom um, slot IDs and our whole uh, equipment setup. Now what we need to do is create the user interface. So we'll go to UI Editor, and let's create a new widget. And I'm going to call this Slayer's Equipped. Slayer's EQPT, something like that. And 
I'm going to set this to be draggable and have a close button. And we'll just call this, title this Slayer's Equipment, just so that we can see in game it's truly our own custom interface. I'm going to put a 3D model into the widget. Just resize it a bit. And let's set this up so that... Let's resize this a tad. We also need to put some equipment slots into the widget as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the armor slot be just there and then the weapon slot can be on the other side and the shield slot can be on the other side okay let's put the armor one just a bit further up you can lay this out however you want i'm not going to spend too long on the user interface okay but what you want to do once you've set everything up as you want it to look you then want to select each equipment slot and go to the element properties and you want to change the slot ID that it's using. So at the moment, this is the default inbuilt system. We want to select the ones from our equipment that we've set up in our stats tab. Okay. So remember the weapon slot is for the sword, the defense slot is for the shield and the armor slot is for the armor. So going back to our user interface, this is where the sword should go. So we want this to be weapon slot. This is going to be armor slot, and this is going to be defense slot. What we also need to do is make sure that the player character, so our main dude, uses this custom widget that we've just made instead of the default one. So to do that, you need to go to the model properties and find where it says equipment widget, and you need to change this from being the default one to our custom Slayer's Equipment one in this case and save the model. So that's that set up. So that's going to bring up the widget with our custom user interface and our custom slots. However, the items aren't going to equip at the moment because I've not put the right tags. I also need to set up the third item. So let me just quickly do that as well. So this is armor. And again, I'm just going to quickly create an image of my armor object. This is equipable and its defense, let's say, is five. And the model is armor. And the tag is, and I need to look this up. It's been a while since I've done this. So the armor is chest underscore plate. So that's what the tag is going to be. Chest underscore plate. The sword I remember as being bladed. But let's just check. Yep. And the shield should be buckler. So with that set... We can now equip those items, so that's pretty good. But now we need to set up the attach points so that we can see these objects appear on the model when we equip them. So to do that, we need to go back to the stats and take a look at our slot IDs. Weapon underscore slot, defense underscore slot, armor underscore slot. So let's go to our player character first, and let's add these attach points. So this is going to be weapon underscore slot. This is going to be defense underscore slot. And about here is going to be armor underscore slot. And then on our sword, we need one called weapon underscore slot. And we need one on the shield called defense underscore slot. And then lastly, one in the middle of the armor called armor underscore slot and I'm just going to move that attach point slightly just so it's more in the middle like that would be and then save all of the items or the 3D models even 
save all the objects. And that should be pretty much it good to go, as long as you double check everything. So just, just double checking that I've not made any spelling mistakes or anything. Um, what we should also do, however, before we test is set up the attach uh, points so that they actually look right in game. Because obviously, even though they'll attach, they may not look correct. So in order to do that, you go to your player character and you scroll down on the model properties for your character to where it says attach points and you pick a slot so let's start with the weapon slot and you click this middle button here where it says preview attached objects now this is the weapon slot so what we want to view is the sword and if if you don't see an attach point name in this box it's because you haven't saved your sword model since putting the attach point on so make sure that um, you save your model all your models before you preview the attachments don't tick this box because we don't want to automatically attach this object at the beginning of the game if, unless you want that if you want your player character to start holding the sword then you would tick this but uh, we we don't want to have that happen we want it to be attached later on when we equip it but for now we just want to preview what it will look like when it is equipped so click ok and it will put the sword into the hand so all we need to do is we need to rotate the attach point so the sword is facing the right way. Let's also rotate the sword so it's facing that way. Let's move the sword up again because I lowered it by accident. Now let's change the scale of the sword as well. It's a bit big, so let's make it 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. There you go, a bit more manageable. And then let's preview the defense slot. So this is going to be the shield again. Ah, here we go. So we can see there's no attach point here. So I obviously haven't saved my shield, uh, which is odd because attach points, defense slot, preview, shield. Right. Weird. I just needed to reboot the program. So now I can preview this, the shield so I can see that this needs to be moved forward a bit let's get the wrong one right and then it's far too big so let's make it one perhaps maybe uh, a bit smaller than that maybe same as the sword 0.7 that'll do and then let's just put the sword one back as well And let's do the armor. So armor, armor slot. Okay. And obviously that's again a bit too big. So let's first of all scale that down to one. The, the shield I'm actually going to rotate. So it's more like that, move it like that. That'll do. Okay, I'm not going to mess, mess around too much with it. You get the idea. Let's move the armor down a bit, though. Just so it's not too high up. That's it. Right. So there's uh, our, what the model should look like when it's all set up and done. So let's click save on that. Make sure everything else is saved. Now, I've renamed the attach point on the shield. However, um, I should be able to rename it. So I should just be able to open, open up the shield model and scroll down to my attach points and click the pencil and put this back to defense underscore slot. And that shouldn't affect the main dude. Let me just um, double check that though. So go to the defense slot, preview, shield, defense slot, reattach it. Yeah, seems to be okay. So with that set up, I think we are now done. 
So let's go into the game and test. So before we do that, though, let's because it's been a while since I've gone over everything. Let me just reiterate what we've done. So we started by going into the stats tab. We created a whole new equipment, named it whatever we wanted. We created some slot IDs. We set the tags for the things that should go into those slots. We've enabled the weapon on one of the slots. We've set this as default, so it uses these slots. We then created a user interface widget called Slayer's Equipment with the slots and made it out as we want. We assigned the different slot IDs to these relevant um, boxes. We then saved that widget and set that widget as the equipment widget for the player's properties down here. We then went to our items and set up the relevant tags. So chest plate, buckler, and bladed so that the items go into the right slots. And then the models for the player and the various objects have been given attach points that match the name of our custom slots, slot IDs, okay? And then the last thing we did was we just set up how they should look on the player when they do get attached. So with that set up, let's test that everything now all works together. It should do. So we'll bring the console down and type give underscore item item 0001 and item 2 and item 3. There's our three items. If we click the sword icon, up comes our equipment, not the default equipment. So that's the thing that the that's the option in the in the player's model properties that we changed to, to bring this up instead. And now if we place the armor into the armor slot, the armor appears on the player. The sword goes into the sword slot and appears on the player. And the shield goes into the shield slot and appears on the player. And there we are, we've fully equipped the player. Okay. So the last thing to talk about before we close out is custom sc uh, scripting. If you want to manually script the attachment process. Why, why would you want to do this, for example? Well, maybe you don't want to have the attach points of your objects, like your sword and shield, be the, the exact same name as the attach points on your player. You, you, it just might not make sense. You might want to just not do it that way. So the other way to do that is using the manual scripting, uh, scripting approach. So let me quickly show you how to do that. So for this, what we'll do is we'll go back to the sword and I'm going to rename this because it doesn't make sense to be called weapon slot because it, it is already a weapon. I'm going to rename this to um, sword underscore handle. Okay, That now makes more sense. It's the handle of the sword. Okay. And we will save that. Let's go to the shield and... I'm actually not, I'm only going to do the sword just because, uh, just to save time. You would basically repeat everything I'm going to do for the other two items. But for now, we'll just set out for the shield just so you get an idea of how to do it. So the way this works, if we go back to our items and we focus on the sword item, because this is the one that we've changed, because we've, instead of using the weapon underscore slot attach point, we've renamed it to sword underscore handle, which means it's no longer going to automatically attach the sword model into the hands of the player when we play the game and put the item into the equivalent slot because they don't have the same name anymore. So what you have to do instead is go to the sword item and in the equipable section you have to use the on equip script and the on unequip script to manually set up this part of the process. Okay, so here's how you do that. What you'll do is you go to the script editor and you create a new script. Let's call it equip sword for now. And what we'll do is we're going to drag in attach object. And then it's going to ask you what's the object that you want to attach? Well, in this case, the sword. I want to attach it to the player. What's the what's the attach point name on the sword? Well, in this case, it's um 
sword underscore handle. And what's the name of the player's attach point? It's weapon underscore slot. Okay, so that's the code as it would look like if you written it in code. That's that's what it would look like. So I'll save that. Okay, so this is our equip sword script. So now we've now we've done this, that's all it really has to do. We can go to our items again and we can set this as the equip as the uh, equip script. So on equip, it's going to run the equip sword script. If we now go back to the script editor and we save this as uh, unequip sword and we remove this and we add detach object instead, then we can put the weapon underscore slot in because this is the, this is referencing the player not the sword what this is going to do is it's just going to detach whatever object is attached to the attach point on the player so in this case the weapon slot attach point and that will effectively detach the sword so it's going to kind of do the same thing anyway so we click save on that go back to the items and we want this to go into the on unequip script okay so now we've got two scripts that that are fired either when we equip the sword item or we unequip the sword item. Now remember, equipping is not the same as attaching. So this is only going to fire when we drag the 2D image of the sword into the right slot on the user interface. That will then fire this script. And what this script is going to do is force the attachment. So let's take a look at the script again for equip sword. It's basically going to force, even though these two attach points are not named the same anymore, it's going to force the connection anyway because that's what attach object command does. It takes the object, the two objects that you want to have connected, and it takes the two different names on each of the two items and it connects them at those points. Okay. So fundamentally, this is going to act exactly the same as it did previously when they were set up to work automatically using the same names, but now it's just working manually via a script. So let's just test that this works. So here we are back in the game. So I'll just quickly give myself just the sword this time because that's the only one I've really changed. But now this time the sword has a completely different attach point name to the player's hand. But it shouldn't matter because the moment we drag this 2D item into the sword slot, it will run that script which is going to force the connection of the player model and the sword model on those two separate attach points. And there we go. So you can see the sword model appear. And as soon as we remove the sword from the slot, it's going to run the on unequip script, which is going to detach the object on the player's hand. And you see it disappear. So it works fundamentally the same as it would automatically, but this time it's just using different names. Okay. Now, because it's a script, you also have a bit more control and a bit more creative uh, control and uh, variety of what you can do. For example, our script, we can embellish it. We could have a display message. So now when you equip the item, not only does it appear on the player, but you get a message saying you equip the sword or whatever you want. You can also, this would also be where you would add effects or play an effect. Yeah, enable effect or play effect, depending on, you know, if, if you've got a flaming sword or something that should ignite when you equip it, then it would be in this script. So the moment you equip the 2D item, the model gets attached and then you see the flames appear on the model by having an add, an add effect or play effect or whatever. Admittedly, I haven't looked too much into that, so don't expect me to explain it in this video. But the point is, that's where you would do it. That's where you would have that take place. But that will now bring us to the end of this video. I pretty much covered everything I can think to bring up about equipment and how to attach things and how to equip things. I hope this video has helped clarify a few things and it's helped make this process make more sense and uh, put it in a way that helps you move forward with getting your equipment working. If you have any 
further struggles or questions regarding this, feel free to ask on the Discord. But for now, that will wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.